of firearms, remanded to Juvenile Hall. Vincent Lubeck, age 17, breaking and entering. Whitmore Reformatory, six months. Vincent Lubeck, age 19, petty theft. Sentenced to city jail, nine months. Vincent Lubeck, age 20, grand theft, auto. Sentenced to county jail, one year. Vincent Lubeck, age 22, armed robbery. Sentence five to ten years, state penitentiary. Gentlemen, Vincent Lubeck is a hoodlum, an habitual criminal. It is my opinion that he be denied parole. But Warden, Vincent Lubeck has served his sentence. His record here has been exemplary, and I feel this man Ordinarily, should... Warden, your objection would be sufficient for denial of parole. But in this case, there seems to be extenuating circumstances. The only extenuating circumstance in Vincent Lubeck's case is that he has not killed anybody. Yet. I'm in contact with this type of criminal every day. I live with them. The Vincent Lubeck's never change. But, Warden, this is an institution for correction, not punishment. If we permitted ourselves to act in so prejudiced a manner, we'd be subject to attack from society. Apparently, you do not realize we are not dealing with the old-style gangster anymore. The Vincent Lubeck's are committing the most vicious crime there is. A crime against people. Street attacks, armed robbery, assaults upon women, murder. The hoodlum is our public enemy, number one. Oh, gentlemen, I would like to have you meet Mrs. Lubeck, Vincent's mother. It would make no difference. I'm dealing with brutal facts, not sentiment. I see no reason why we should not see Mrs. Lubeck. Would you please come in, Mrs. Lubeck? This is Lubeck. This is Warden Stevens. These gentlemen are members of the parole board. Mrs. Lubeck, there seems to be some inadvisability about granting parole to your son. Why won't you let him come home? I can only go by Vincent's record, Mrs. Lubeck. Why do you hate my boy? Mrs. Lubeck, I don't hate your son. It's just my opinion that he is not fit to take his place in society. In five years, long enough to take from a boy's life. When do you think he will be ready? Ten years? Twenty years? When I'll be dead and there won't be anybody for him to come home to? Uh, Mrs. Lubeck, let me ask. Did Vincent ever bring home a paycheck? Did he ever buy you a dress? Did he ever take you anywhere? Dress? Good time. They don't prove anything. You do not know Vincent like me. Ever since he was a little boy, he fights the whole world because he wants to be big. I tell him to be big. He must be big inside. Vincent is a plain boy. He don't have the strength to make his dream come true. To dream is not enough. For five years he's in jail. Now he understands that in this world there is a place for everything. Everything can be silk. There must be cotton. Please. Please. Let him come home with me. It's the decision of this board that Vincent Lubeck be granted parole. It is my duty as warden to apprise you of the conditions of your parole. You will report monthly to your parole officer. 
You shall. Yeah, I know. Notify him of any change of address and get a job within 60 days. Yes, you would be familiar with parole procedure. I forgot for the moment I was speaking to Vincent Lubeck. Will that be all? Lubeck, I want you to know that I objected to your parole. If it hadn't been for your mother, you'd serve your full sentence. Come with me. walk out of here, then come back and leave again through this door. Open it. Keep thinking about this, Lubeck. Remember, there are no paroles once you pass this door. Johnny, no, hello? Look, Vince, let's get this straight. I didn't come for you. I drove Mama here. Johnny. You mean Johnny owns this? Three years now. You big servant. Where do you get the dough to buy it? Papa's insurance. If he was here, Vincent, he would be a very happy man. How much was there? It was only a small policy. Johnny used his share for a down payment on the station. What about the rest? Lawyer. Johnny bought all this. Take a breath, Vincent. Go ahead. Smell. You can smell fresh air here. Not like where we used to live by the city dump. Every time the wind changed, my, the smell. And Papa running around all day yelling, keep the windows closed, keep the windows... Stop it, Ma. Keep the windows closed. What was the use? The stink came through them anyhow. Into all the corners, into your lungs, your skin. Even if you took a bath every day, the stink would stick. Our playground, where we picked up a few pieces of junk to get spending money. A rotten stink. Even now, we're not too far away from it. Yeah, but you wait. I got ideas. I'll get plenty of money. Yeah, dough. That's the only thing that'll ever cover up the stink of the city dump. Vince! You mustn't talk like that. You've got a whole new life to look ahead to. Look at Johnny. Yeah, grease monkey. Had to wait till Papa died so we get enough money to make a down payment on a gas station. Vincent. Ma, the Bible gives you 70 years to live. The insurance companies tell you it's 65. The big companies tell you after 40 you can't make a buck. Well, I haven't got far to go. When you die, you're a long time dead. And when you are in jail, are you alive? Rosa. Hello, Mama. Vincent, do you remember Rosa, Johnny's girl? Welcome home, Vincent. Hello, Rosa. Johnny, you promised me. Vincent, suppose you forget what I said. Yes, yeah, sure. This is how it should be. Brothers should always stick together. 
Well, what are we waiting for? Come, Rosa, you'll help with supper. All right. Johnny, tell Vincent about the station. It's Mom's idea, Vince. You mean I'm supposed to work in the gas station? She had to tell the parole board you had a job. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. That is not a bad idea. With you in the station, we could stay open longer. Pump more gas. And there are a few things I'd like to do. Put in a wash rack. I was in such a hurry this morning, I didn't get a chance to clean the dirt from under my fingernails. Then I like Your to... Your nails do get dirty, don't they, Johnny? Yeah, Vince, they do. But this kind of dirt you can wash off. Like it? Crazy about it. It's good work, Vince. Out in the open all day, meeting different people. And best of all, you're your own boss. Nobody gives any orders around here. Who would you give them to? The gas pump? I ain't taking any. Hey, Vince, the boss looks some kind of clockwise in that wheel. Why don't you give the jerk who wanted a buck and let him do it himself? If I had the time, I could probably do a better job than you. Tell me, what keeps you so busy? My job. What about getting back to yours? I need my car. Yours? Heaven really must be helping the working girl these days. Not heaven. The bank. The bank? And the manager's secretary. On a secretary's salary? I take home samples. That's an interesting hobby. Got any others? Yes. I read books. Hey, Vince. Want to eat first? Tony's down the street is pretty good. No, I'll get something later. Okay, then I'll go grab a sandwich. Come up, Lubeck. I mean your eyes. You seem to have fallen out of your head. Don't get too ambitious. That gal's out of your class. That's what I like about you cops, always taking the pleasures out of life. How long have you been staked out here? Long enough to see you do the first bit of honest work in your life. Didn't lose any time checking up on me, did you, Sergeant? Lieutenant. Hailing you for that stick-up five years ago got me a promotion. Well, hanging around here is not going to make you a captain. I'd rather make it some other way. Cut out the double talk, Burdick. You're pinch crazy. There's too many guys doing time because they forgot you're a cop. Not me. I wasn't born yesterday. I'm not forgetting you owe me five years of my life. You cheap hood. Always looking for a fall guy and never realizing you're it. Lieutenant, a beef at Elm and 25th. I don't owe you a thing, Lubeck. But if you think I do, try to collect. I'd like to pay you off once and for all. What do you want? Take a dollar's worth of that gas. what you're doing. I only asked for a dollar's worth and I won't pay one cent more. Now look what you've done. You ruined the paint. Get a rag and wipe it off. Quickly. Well, what are you waiting for? You ruined that paint. I won't pay you for the gas. Try and collect. Hey, hey, stop that. Cut it up. Did you hear me? Stop it. Competition is too tough and I don't find customers in the street. That old man will never come back again. I'm trying to run a business. This isn't kid stuff anymore. Oh, it's no use, Rosie. You can't even talk to him. Try to help him and he blows his top. It won't work out. Lower your voice, Johnny. You don't want to upset Mama. 
You must be patient. After all, it's his first day, and he's been away five years. Well, I'm meeting him more than halfway. But it's not only that. Tony, the restaurant man, told me the police came into the station today. What did they want? I don't know. I wasn't there. But it's no good in a neighborhood like that. Johnny, he's your brother. If you won't give him a chance, who will? All right, the cops coming into the station can't be helped. But that stuff he pulled today. Maybe if I spoke to him. That's no use. He won't listen. Even Mama can't straighten him out. I think I understand what's troubling him, Johnny. A woman's touch? Okay, go ahead. See if you can put some sense into his head. But watch out he doesn't bite yours off. Johnny. Where did he go? Probably up to the roof. When we were kids, he always ran up to the roof. So he'd like to look down at the people. They looked so small. Made them feel good. So one lecture's enough for tonight. I only want to help. And so does Johnny. I don't need his help. What does Johnny think he's got? Grease a car, pump some gas, you know it's filled with a stink of automobiles, and on top of that, give them service. Not for me. Is it so... So difficult to adjust yourself, Vincent? I came out just like I went in, only smarter. I learned a few things. It's better to forget those things. Start with new plans. Forget what? But I was behind bars thinking about the day when I'd get out, when life wouldn't be planned for me and I could walk around just like anybody else. When you get out, they won't let you forget. There's still plenty of finger at you or something different. Why don't you stop yelling, I'm an ex-con, what are you going to do about it? The only finger pointing at you is your own. Don't hand me that. Make a mistake once and you're dead. The cops are always after you. People don't want you around. Everybody wants to play warden. Keep them locked up, keep them pended. Don't let them free. Humans, animals, birds, cage. the use of that, Vincent? What did it accomplish? If only you'd stop to think, to plan your life. You know all the answers, don't you? Got everything planned. Know just what you want and where you're going. Well, what if it explodes in your face? I know just what I want. That could never happen. Sure, you planned it. Everything's just so. One and one making two. What if something comes along you never figured on? One and one don't add up any longer. For instance, something like this. You keep looking like that, I bet the bank's going to start charging admission. Oh, they do. Only the depositors don't know about it. Uh, give me five. I've just 30 minutes to make it to our head office. Put your money away. It's on me. Looks like they're sending the main asset down to the downtown branch. Oh, only for the afternoon. There's a bank manager's meeting. Say, how about a passenger? I'm going down to City Hall on some business. It's only a couple of blocks from where you're going. All right, hop in. Cigarette? No, thanks. I don't smoke. What do you do for entertainment? Looking at money all day must get boring. Can you think of a better pastime? 
Yeah, spending it. These guys that sort it away in the bank haven't got the right idea. Me, I can think of better things to do with dough. For instance? Trade it for real living. These old guys sitting in exclusive clubs have got it and want to keep it. But I never heard of anybody coming back from down there saying he was having a good time. There's wine I've never tasted, music I've never heard. And, uh, women? And women. Only there I'm even more particular. It's like a kid working at a candy factory. First he tastes everything that comes along. After a while the only thing he touches is the silver wrap stuff. Then he's sick of that and he looks for something real special. Like you. And when he does find it? Oh, he's extra careful. Babies it so it'll last. How about some night this week? Thursday? It's my day off. Any day but that. We're usually busy preparing our Federal Reserve deposits for shipment, and the pickup service doesn't like to be kept waiting. Why? What's the hurry? They carry a lot of money, and they're cautious about staying in one place too long. Sounds like a junior edition of the Mint. Guess if I had that kind of money, I wouldn't stay in one place too long either. <laughs> The big man. I see they made you a member of the club. When did you fall out? Last month. This was my first visit. Hey, you're looking prosperous. What are you doing? Legitimately? Selling used cars. You? Pumping gas at my brother's station, 4th and Boston. I mean, what do you got going for you? Keep it shady. We're not fixed to go. I'll see you next month. Wait a minute, Marty. I got something that'll be... No, I'm not interested. All right. But if you happen to know somebody who is interested in half a million, let me know. I've been listening to your line for five years. Another couple of hours won't make any difference. I'll meet you tonight at the gas station. I'm telling you, I can have the whole thing figured out in no time. An armored car? You're nuts. There's only one guy who was big enough to figure a deal like this. Razov. And he's doing 20. Right. But you forget, I was his cellmate. And I did a lot of listening in five years. My brother Johnny. Marty Connell, a friend of mine. Hey, Vince, the parts house just closed, and I have to, may have to chase all over town and get what we need. Uh, I can check with Rosa at Acme Wrecking? Yeah, I caught her just before she left. No luck. Uh, take care of everything when I'm gone, will you? Yeah. Your brother doesn't seem to like your friends. He doesn't like me. Well, how about it, Marty? If there's a half a million, it speaks for itself. Now nah, you're talking. Johnny? Johnny? Where's Johnny? He went to get some parts, didn't you know? He said he checked with you. He did. I came down to tell him where he could get them. Why didn't you phone? Well, I... I thought I might catch him before he left. Yeah, too bad you didn't. You look upset. What's the matter, one of your little plans go wrong? You knew Johnny wasn't gonna be here. You know all the answers. One and one doesn't make two, does it, Rosa? Well, you've had eight weeks to play with this thing, and it's been costing dough. Can you answer a few questions now? Shoot. Well, the mastermind is going to talk. Okay. Where does it happen? We'll take it in front of the bank. Why there? It's a busy street. Too many people. It's the only place that makes a regular scheduled stop. I still think we ought to take it off between stops. We'd have more time for a getaway. Less interference. Marty, those armored cars are like tanks when they're closed up. 
With that bulletproof glass and steel plates, the crew can hold off an army. How many men do you think we'll need? About six. Now for the jackpot question. When? Yeah, I'll let you know that when I figured out one more little detail. What do you mean? After all this, you still don't know when we're going? Marty, ten minutes after we take that armored car, the police let the entire area bottled up. Getting through that blockade is a little detail. I'll be a good little boy. Let me have the keys of the car. Taking that bank dame out again? Marty, this is business. I shouldn't be up this late thinking. How about a night, Cap? Let's make it another night. Thanks for a wonderful evening. Good night. standing here at this hour of the morning. Somebody might see you. I don't care. I had to see you. I must talk to you. Can't I wait till this afternoon? Come on, let me take you home. I'll see you later. No. You're just trying to get rid of me. All right, all right, but not here. Come on, let's go up on the roof. No one will see us up there. Roger, we've been through this all before. It's two months. How much longer do you think I can keep this up? Johnny doesn't understand why I've been avoiding him. Why I've been so cool. Mama. What are you dragging her in for? This is between us. No, it isn't. There's Johnny. It's not fair to him. We must tell him. Tell him what? That I've stolen his girl? Did you belong to me? Oh, you like that, I'll bet. Can we go away? Get married? Live someplace where we're not known? I could get a job. I can't go anywhere, you know that. If the parole board doesn't see my kisser once a month, I'll lose my good standing in the community. And look, Rosa, about this marriage business, you've got the wrong idea. You're Johnny's girl. The next time he calls, answer. Say hello. I haven't even the right to say hello. Even if he wanted to, I couldn't marry him. Just tell Johnny you took time out on a little plan that didn't work out. Please, come in. Sit down. Please, sit down. You remember me? Yes, Mrs. Lubeck. You're Vincent's mother. You heard about Rosa? Yes, and I'm very sorry. As a matter of fact, I was just going through a copy of the autopsy report. Autopsy? What is that? Well, Mrs. Lubeck, when somebody dies, as Rosa did, the police have to make an examination. When you called me, I thought I'd take a look through the report. Since Rosa has no next of kin, I've secured permission for you to hold her funeral. I thank you very much, Mr. Burdick. Rosa was Johnny's girl, wasn't she? Yes. They were going to get married. It's too bad they didn't. Maybe this wouldn't have happened. What do you mean? Autopsy, 
report, Rosa Chermak. Uh, this is what I mean, Mrs. Lubeck. Autopsy findings reveal the deceased was two months pregnant. Not Johnny. He loved Rosa too much. Why don't you eat, Johnny? I can't understand it. Why did she do it? You really don't know, Johnny. I hadn't spoken to her for weeks. She wouldn't even talk to me on the telephone. I only know why she did it. Because she was nuts. And any dame who jump over a roof must be nuts. Johnny! Johnny! Nothing but trouble since you came home. I suppose I'm to blame for Rosa. Nobody said that, Vincent. Thanks for taking care of everything, Mr. Breckenridge. Not at all. It's too bad. Rosa was a beautiful girl. How is Johnny? I see he's not around today. Yeah, he's taking it pretty hard. He'll get over it. Time is a great healer. By the way, how far is it out to the cemetery? My mother wants me to drive her there next week. Exactly 11 miles from here. Is it that far? It didn't take us long to get out there. We never drive fast, but we do have the courtesy of the road. The police wave us right through. Charges in my account. Fine. Good night. Good night. Police discovered the body of an unidentified man about 65 near 5th and Broadway late last night. The body now in the city morgue will be buried in Potter's Field unless claimed within 48 hours. Well, Uncle John is dead. Let's get moving. Christy, you will become Miss Vanguard. Eddie, you're her attorney. You play chauffeur. Right. Yeah, and lay off the booze. We want this to look good. Yes, it's Uncle John. I'll arrange for the removal of the body with the Breckenridge mortuary. Come, oh, my dear. You mustn't be so distraught. Miss Van Gogh was very fond of her Uncle John. Of course, her position would preclude any publicity. Of course. Uncle John's eccentricities, his death in the street like a common derelict, uh, you understand. Discretion is synonymous with the Breckenridge mortuary. Funeral will be small, just a family. But we shall want the very best. And of course, Uncle John's wish. That he be interred at the precise moment of his birth. The Breckenridge Mortuary prides itself on fulfilling the slightest wish of our belief. right on the nose. If we'd been ready, we could have taken it right then. Yeah, they'd have taken us right with it. One little hole is big enough for all of us to get buried in. 
Well, where is it, Vince? The bank door. Somebody will have to be there just in case the bank guard gets ambitious. Yeah. You're right. Who are we going to put there? You. Nice. Right in the coffin corner. Where are you going to be? As I've always said, keep one man you can positively depend on in reserve, just in case anything goes wrong. I'm the only man I can depend on. I'll be right here in front of the gas station. And on this day, we are gathered in sorrow to pay a final tribute to one whose presence on this earth brought happiness to many hearts. To those who knew him best, John, uh, John C. Vanguard was a man of many facets his niece. He was the essence of kindness and love, a never failing tower of strength. To his associates and employees, he was a fair-minded, open-handed man. His many good deeds had endeared him to all as Uncle John. None were ever turned away by him. His charities were legion. To those in need, he was truly a friend. For John C. Vanguard asked only of life to be of aid to his fellow men. And so we say farewell to this beloved man whose memory will remain evergreen in our hearts. I can take care of everything. I can back to get some money. So what are you so jumpy about? Maybe you need a day off worse than I do. <laughs> Maybe we've both been working too hard. The way we jump at each other. Yeah, forget it. Go and pick up Mom. She'll be waiting for you. Right. Marty Connell across the street. Yeah, so what? Vince, there's something phony going on. I just saw Marty nod to those two guys. Something tells me he's not a positive. I'm going to call the police. Get away from that phone. Drop it. Then I'm a truck. Vince, you're out of your mind. Put down that phone. I'm not kidding, Johnny. Get back, Johnny, get back. You can't do it, Vince. It'll kill Mama. Vince, how can I make you see it's all wrong? You can't. I've got it beat now.
was your coat. I looked at the station. There was no time to get it. Keep those reporters outside. We'll have a statement for them as soon as we know something. The moon they get to. I want to yes? blockade airtight. Attention all cars. Two men jumped into getaway cab. Both are described as being of average height. They are armed and dangerous. Take no chances. Shoot to kill. <laughs> Commissioner. Yes, Commissioner. Every available man's on the job. Plan B went into full effect just two minutes after I got the report. The getaway car is somewhere inside the blockade. Sorry, those are our orders. Nothing goes through. But certainly your orders don't apply to the dead. Well, I guess I could call in and find out. Is that necessary? I have no authority to let you through. If you'll just be patient, I'll try and get you a clearance. Of this delay, you folks can go ahead now. Thank you very much, officer. It's tied up for the rest of the day. Nothing goes through. Okay, Lieutenant. Uh, Schmidt speaking for Lieutenant Burdick. Catch anything in that net? Yeah, well, I have a note right here. Funeral from Breckenridge Mortuary. First and two limousines. Just went through a few minutes ago en route to White Cedar Cemetery. Okay. I'll have all you fellas go down and take a look through the mud racks. Might be able to identify that cab driver. They're holding it down, Lieutenant. The only thing that went through is a hearse and two limousines from the Breckenridge Mortuary. Okay, Smith. Breckenridge. Mr. Breckenridge? Yes. Police. The funeral that left here a short while ago. I want some information. Is there anything wrong? That's what I'm trying to find out. Was there anything out of the ordinary about that funeral? There was. But I hardly see how that concerns the police. Listen, Mr. Breckenridge, this is not morbid curiosity on my part. There are two dead men out on that street. That funeral procession must have passed a moment before they were killed. Come on, quit hedging. I want the details. Very well. There was the unusual request of the deceased that he be interred at the precise moment of his birth. 1101. There was... How many people were there? Only the family were present. Three. For two cars? Oh, no. They used only one. Their own. (laughs) 
And the last thing I saw was Tony and John laying dead in front of the bank. Would you think this was going to be a picnic? This isn't Christmas and those guards weren't Santa Claus. All right. Skip the nursery rhymes and cut up that dough. There's your end, Christy. That's not enough. I stuck my neck out as far as anyone. I'm entitled to an even cut. Marty? She's right, Vince. If anything had gone wrong, she'd take the rap the same as any of us. If anybody gets more, it should be me. It was my job. But look, there were eight of us when we started. There's only six now. She gets the same as any of us. That's like giving you a double share, Marty. I think your arithmetic's a little off. How about it, fellas? You want to kick in 25 grand a piece just to make little Christy happy? Well, what's a few thousand more or less? Sure, it's all right with me. And it's okay with Mickey, too. How about you, Vince? Not me. I planned this thing and got you through okay. Now you're on your own. All right, Vince. Keep it. But I've got news for you. I'm not going to be happy. The streets are crawling with patrol cars. Did you get rid of the car? Yeah, yeah. Let me see that sheet. There's your end on the table. I got a bigger headline here, Vince. Let's get out of here. Eddie, let's put the money in a suitcase. Right, Marty. Mickey, you get Marty's car. Okay, Christy. I didn't expect you, Vincent. Why did you come here? You invited me for a nightcap, baby. Remember? You're being presumptuous. That doesn't give you any priorities on my present or future. I think you'd better leave. What's the matter? Are you getting tired of my company? I intend to stay here for a few days. Harboring a fugitive isn't my idea of companionship. Get out of my bedroom. If you don't leave, I'll call the police. Don't forget to tell them where I got the information about the money in the armored car. You handle the truth carelessly, don't you, Vincent? That's what I like about you, class. Never come right out and call a man a liar. Relax. I'm only gonna be here for a couple of days. You got any cigarettes? I left mine at the gas station in my jacket. I know, you were in a hurry. There are no cigarettes here. Vincent, you forgot. I don't smoke. Don't get any ideas. Get out. Just a moment. Forget this address. I never intend to remember it.
Well, guess I was mistaken. Let's turn the headlights on our car, projecting one of these gas pump shadows on that door as we drove by. Hanging around this neighborhood's making me see things. How about it, Lieutenant? Can we check in? My wife is going to let me know she's a wife. Okay, let's... Lubeck, we know you're inside. Come on out, Lubeck, with your hands up. WK to all cars, this is hot. Vincent Lubeck, heading south on 5th Street. Driving stolen patrol car 97. He may be armed. Shoot to kill. Lieutenant, you hooked in from here. Lubeck? Lubeck, this is Lieutenant Burdick speaking. This is the box score. Marty Connell, dead. Eddie Brighton, dead. Mickey Sessions, in the hospital. Harry Hill, in jail. Christy Lang, dying. You haven't a chance, Lubeck. It's just a matter of time. Lubeck. They're on him. Where? Harper Street. It's too late, Vincent. It's too late. What can Mama do? Go to the electric chair for you? Don't say that, Ma. Should I tell lies for you again? Say that you are a good boy, that you didn't mean it? Who should I tell? The man laying dead by the bank? Rosa, who you made a shame. Papa, whose heart you broke. Can they hear me? It's too late, Vincent. It's too late. Shut up, Ma. Shut up. I should have shut up a long time ago. But no, I thought my heart was big enough for both of us. I was blind. I always stuck up for you. No one could tell me you was no good. No matter what they told me, I didn't believe. Every time you got in trouble, I worked, I borrowed, I go to the lawyers, the war dealers, begging, crying to get you out of jail. What did you want me to do? I never had a chance. I had to look for some way out. I wasn't going to let them kick me around. So you got the gun. But that wasn't the only way you killed. You took your papa's name and burned a number in his heart. One, nine, nine, four, three, six. Every time I wrote a letter, Vincent Lubeck, one, nine, nine, four, three, six. I should let you rot in jail. At least Rosa wouldn't have thrown herself off the roof.
What did you want from her? She meant nothing to you. But because she belonged to your brother, you had to take her. And she died with your baby unborn. Ma, I didn't know. And if you had, would you have cared? Who's love? All the time you were yelling about the smells from the city dump. You are the smell. You are the stink. Ma. Now you cry, my son, when it is too late for tears. <laughs> you should have cried a long time ago and washed that poison out of your heart. Now it is late. My. Ma. Ah. Ma. Ah. Ma. Your pills, Ma. I gotta get your pills. Mama's dead. Yeah. She's dead. Nothing could stop her from loving you but death. Well, now she's dead. And you killed her. Just like you killed Papa and Rosa. Johnny, I never had nothing to do with Rosa. Liar. You never had anything of your own. Everything you got, you had to steal. And what you stole, you could never keep. Get going. Where? Where are we going? To the city dump. That's where we belong. That's all we're fit for. No, Johnny. I'll do anything. There's nothing you can do, Vincent. My mama got you out of jail. You bragged about your big fix. Well, there are no fixes here. Mama can't talk for you anymore. Never mind the cops. I'm gonna finish this where it all started. Shut up. What have you got to do with God? Get out. No, Johnny, no. You can't. Not your own brother. You can't. 